What is up? John here. It's Knife Making Tuesday. Couldn't be happier. Uh, last week I made a set of handles and today I'm making blades. Uh, and if I have time left over I'm going to make another set of um, uh, handles just like this but as a frame lock. Notice this is button lock. So I'm in the garage right now. It's cold and snowed and uh, just ready. I got my blades in the machine. I'm going to make them out of 304 stainless steel for starters, just because it's a cheap, easy to machine material, and, uh, well, hopefully easy, I don't know. And um, if that goes well, then I'll make a real blade out of RWL34 or something like that. Um, but yeah, so I'm not going to sleep tonight until I have two knives finished. Let's do it. <laughs> Oftentimes when I post one of these videos about, uh, you know, me working on my machine, I get a lot of machinists um, piping in and saying, milling with a drill chuck like this uh, is a bad idea. And I know that. I know it is. Um, for one thing, because it's not very concentric, it's pretty terribly circular, but for another, it's just not very strong. It's actually kind of dangerous um, because it could break the way it's attached to the spindle, it could just snap right off. Um, luckily, I, I uh, machine very lightly and very delicately, so uh, I haven't had a problem with that yet. But the eventual goal is to upgrade to these. These are called collets. This is an ER20 collet, and it, you know, it's held into the machine like this. And these are perfectly concentric and much, much stronger than a drill chuck. But, uh, and I only have one of these right now, but it's kind of a big deal for me to switch between the drill chuck and this, uh, you know, throughout a part that I have 10 or 12 different tools that I'm using. And I only have two collets. Uh, this is a quarter inch and I have an eighth inch as well. Um, but the eventual goal, like I said, is to buy a whole bunch of these, or actually I'm having them made, uh, specifically for a tool changer that I'm making, and um, use these for pretty much everything except for drill bits. Uh, so that's the eventual goal, but for right now, here's my quarter-inch four-flute ball mill, uh, and this is going to do the profiling, or not the profiling, the uh, contouring of the blade edge. So I'm going to chuck that up right now, and here we go. So I got it, uh, got it in, now I'm just lowering it so that I can zero it on the fixture plate here. A tiny little shim that I use, 2,000s of an inch thick. And once it touches that, then I know it's 2,000 up. Tell the computer, 0 0.002. Up we go. Get my coolant aimed close enough. And let's get you in close to the action. So I've got the quarter inch ball mill mounted up. And, um, series of holes drilled already, so like I said, the next step is just uh, doing the blade. So let's hit go. This is going to take a long time. So while that last coat is running, uh, 
I have been given a task. Go put the chickens away for the night. Yeah, we have chickens. Man, this camera doesn't really pick up night light. I'm using my uh, 47's 123 flashlight. I mean, that's 180 lumens. And this camera's hardly picking up any of it. But anyway, we got snow. Good night, chickens. Sleep tight, stay warm. This looks awesome. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. Um, so, of course, since I'm doing two blades, I was able to try two different machining methods. Uh, the top one turned out amazing. The bottom one turned out less amazing. Um, basically, the top one follows the contour and then curves around and follows that. And it just does that. It's called constant Z machining, which is Z is the up and down distance. So it just goes a certain distance down and follows the path. This one just went exactly left to right. You can see the lines going straight left to right, whereas these, they curve with the program. Um, this one took, uh, I forget, 20 minutes or something. This one took an hour and a half. So I think I'll stick with the one that looks better and takes one third of the time. Even more than that, or shorter than that. Um, so that looks awesome. So I've, now I have to profile around the outside and flip them over and then do the same thing again. Uh, and I just went to my computer and I changed the other side of this blade to be machining like this. So it's going to look different from side to side, but I'll probably sand it down or whatever. Hand rub it. Um, just to save me, you know, an hour ten of time, of machining time. Um, so I'm going to do this on both the other sides. So I get pretty close to being done and I had a little bit of a setback. My uh, two-year-old daughter thought it would be hilarious to wake up at 10 p.m. and stay awake until 2 a.m. Finally got her asleep and that's where I am right now. So it's 2 o'clock in the morning and um, I gotta finish up as I promised. Um, I haven't gotten the second uh, the frame lock handles made but who cares. Uh, but I got the two blades almost done just doing the last profile pass and then a quick engraving job and uh, We'll be good to go. Let's hit it. Check this out. End mill broke right away. And uh, I don't know if you saw those sparks, but um, yeah, you can see a shiny ring on the inside there. That's where the end mill was grinding up against the top of the collet there. Fun! Jerk. What the heck? I don't know what happened. I was relatively conservative with the speed at which it came down. Just didn't like it. Ugh. Don't tell me I gotta stop and do this in the morning. Well, I got a little bit farther this time before breaking another end mill. Fun stuff. I think I'm just being too aggressive with this material in these end mills. Eighth inch end mill, doing a full pro, um, full depth pass, you know, eighth of an inch down, four and a half inches per minute. I think I'll have to, instead of going all the way down, I'll have to go like down in four separate passes. So that'll be much less uh, aggressive on the tool. More changes. It's almost three in the morning. 
I might have to call this and deal with it another day. Alright guys, it's Wednesday evening now. I finally get a chance to uh, play with it again. And I broke my third 8th inch end mill. Um, no fun whatsoever. What I'm trying to do is profile around the outside of the blades to cut them out from the, the rectangular sheet. And um, I really got to stop using 8th inch end mills because they're too weak. Uh, so what I'm going to do is whip up some code so that I can use a quarter inch end mill to rough it out and then I'll go in real tight and just finish it up with the eighth inch end mill. So the eighth inch is barely taking, a, taking any material off but the quarter is doing all the roughing. I mean you can it's twice the size you, you can tell how it's stronger it's gonna be so that's what I'm gonna do right now. I've heard that 304 stainless is a uh, a real uh, you know pain to work with. Um, blade steel might be even easier, I don't know yet. So, 304 might have been the wrong choice for my tester. I know I did some uh, some mild steel, um, you know, in my week, what, week two video, and I uh, cut beautifully with the eighth inch end mill, um, but stainless is really causing me problems. So, quarter inch, we'll try it out. <laughs> See, profiling the blades like this is really difficult on, uh, it's hard on the tools and the machinery, especially weak little systems like mine, so that's why a lot of really, uh, really good knife makers get their stuff water jet cut first. And then you just gotta finish machine it, that's super easy to do. So down the road, that's a plan for sure. Exciting stuff, guys. Oh, man. Alright, let's get some close-up footage of these. So here we are with the finished blades. Oh boy, this is great. You can see I engraved my logo onto it. 304 stainless steel, just to remind myself what it is. Prototype. So this one here is the button lock version. Sorry for the crying baby in the background. I thought I think she fell down. Um, mommy's taking care of her. Um, so this is the button lock version. You can see the button lock stops here and here, and they're tapered eight degrees. And I did that on the machine. And the surface finish is, I think, acceptable. I might go in there with a file and clean it up. And yeah, we'll see. So the blade, this blade, I tried two different surfaces, um, two different 3D milling techniques. This one's called uh, Constant Z, and I really like this one. It just follows the profile of the blade, and then goes down again and follows the profile of the blade. And on the other side, this is called Linear, and it just goes left to right, and follows up and down and up and down so the lines are completely horizontal. Now as you can see right here I've got some divots where I don't know why but it thought it would go a little bit deeper there um, so that's kind of ugly. Uh, it might look okay if I um, you know used the scotch bright wheel and sort of got rid of all those lines but I'm quite in love with this look and uh, it kept this uh, ridge right there really nice. So this is right off the machine, still got a big burr on the bottom. Um, and the second blade, where I did constant Z machining on both sides, it went too thin here at the edge. 
So you can see how it's kind of wavy. Um, it's supposed to be a lot deeper than that. See if I line the two up. You can see how the lower blade, there's a lot more material. So the upper blade uh, kind of got screwed. So that's not good. I think I know what happened, but keep dinking around with it. And then the one on the right is the frame lock. This is where the frame locks. Uh, also an 8 degree angle with a little bit of a uh, lip at the end. So I'm going to give the blade a quick uh, buzz on my scotch Bright wheel here. I hear a lot of knife makers talking about these on the forums. And there's ones you can buy that are about an inch thick. These are three different ones, but if you buy the inch thick one, it's about like 60 or 70 bucks. Um, but I found these, they're about half an inch thick for maybe a quarter inch for um, like two or three dollars each. So I'm just stacking them together. It's kind of annoying because they flay apart like that. Um, be nice if I could sandwich them together or something, but these are amazing. Even the uh, $70 one, now that I've used it, is well worth it. Um, so eventually I'll get one of those. But these things are great. Um, just like, this is, this is stainless steel, so it's got really sharp machining edges right now. But you just go like that. And now it's totally smooth, totally rounded over. And feels amazing. Uh, the tumbler pretty much does that too, but this takes a minute for the whole blade, so. I'll still tumble them, probably. Tumbling's great because it gets the, an even surface over the whole thing, so. Alright, are you guys ready for this? I don't know if you're ready for this. There it is. Oh, as the angels sing. So basically, it's a beautiful piece of crap. Because it's completely useless. <laughs> um, the stop here seems to work okay. You can hear the button engaging. But you can see this is the tip of the blade right there, way high. So if I push the button and push it down, this is where it's supposed to be, is about down here. But that's not where the button wants to engage. So that's wrong. And more worsely, um, well, also it's stuck. Like if you had a thumb stud here, you wouldn't be able to bring it out because I did something wrong there. So you'd have to push the button to get it out. Then it slides really nicely. And, but, the worst thing of all... Oh look, I made a slip joint. Idiot. Um, obviously this is the first button lock I've ever made, so I didn't... You know, I've seen some of Brian Ty's stuff up close, taken apart. And, uh, but I kind of forgot, obviously. So I did this wrong. It, it does nothing. It's got a taper, but it, it doesn't have a, um, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's all wrong, basically. I think I know how to do it now, but... Anyway, proof of concept, right? This is all prototype practice. Um, tweak my fit and finish, but holy crap, that's a beautiful knife. That's my first knife, guys. I am thrilled. Also, there's some clearance issues. It won't close past there. So you got to push the button. Hey -o. Well, as I said, it is a rough, gorgeous piece of garbage that I will keep forever because it's awesome. I like how the logo sticks out. Sweet. So I'll put a cool anodized titanium thumb stud in there. And dome that. Shorten that. Fix the screws. 
anodize the clip, make titanium standoffs. I mean, there's a lot of work left to do. Obviously, fix the um, issues here. Man, that takes some tight tolerances. On the computer, this is perfect. But obviously, not here. Anyway, uh, thanks guys, I'm gonna cut it here. Lots more work to do, but uh, we'll see what we do next week. I don't really have any plans yet. Thanks for watching guys, take care, bye.